boy, did this episode make me hungry. Hello interwebs, I hope you're all doing well because it is time for me to review the latest episode of Miss Marvel, this time episode 4, Seeing Red. And honestly, it's kind of funny that they named this episode Seeing Red, obviously referring to the red daggers that show up later on in the episode, but the piece of media that I've most equated this show with in terms of just plot structure was actually Pixar's recently released film, uh, Turning Red. So I just thought that that was a funny little connection there, even though I'm, I'm sure that that wasn't a, a direct call out to that. But anyways, regardless... Again, apologies right up front. I am sorry that I am not doing this on camera. Again, my face is still a little bit uh, puffed up, so uh, allow me my vanity for just a little while longer. I promise you'll get to see my beautiful face eventually. But let's get into this episode. I really, really enjoyed this one. Continually, what I am appreciating this show most for is the subtle nuances that it brings to its depiction of this story, even though it is kind of uh, stereotypical in terms of it being something I've seen before with things like Turning Red. But even more than that, and this episode most especially of all of them, the way that this show represents Pakistani culture in a way that feels incredibly authentic. And I say that obviously as someone who's not from Pakistani culture, but just listening to a bunch of other people who are from Pakistan just speak about the show and the way that it's gone about depicting these things. It just made me trust it more and more. And I think this episode just really highlights and showcases that in a way that I don't think I've ever seen Marvel really do. I mean, Marvel has done a better job overall over the past few years of representing different cultures. I think most, especially the most notable one would be like Shang-Chi or Black Panther. But in those films, they were very clearly just condensed into a very two hour limit and were more just a sort of pastiche representations of these cultures rather than specific stuff and there was some specific stuff in there as well with like costuming and things like that but this show is a, a little bit more time to like really dig into all of this and I just love that this show took an actual trip to Pakistan to really show us these things and actually just get to show us this country that is being evoked with um, Kamala in America and, and sort of also drawing the line of where she sits within her understanding of her own culture and her where her family's history is from considering that the story is steeped in that and I, I just really appreciated that I think first and foremost what I really love this episode for and, and just showing us right off the bat is how Kamala is also kind of having the second or third generation immigrant experience in that she is very clearly aware of Pakistani culture she's been raised in it from her family but she's never actually been to Pakistan and so she's kind of learning it from an outsider's perspective throughout this entire episode as well where she gets to like experience food that she's never had before she gets to see different parts of this city that she has never seen before and I think that that is just an interesting perspective I mean I am not from a culture that is typically uh, at least in the present day marginalized but I have had a similar experience where I my family is from Wales I'm a third or fourth generation Welsh immigrant and so I actually got to go back and meet some of my family and had a very similar experience it was like I've never been to Wales and and Wales is not so far off from America but it does have a lot of its own peculiarities in history that I was sort of distant from and I got to learn about it through family members that I had never actually met before uh, but I was related to and it was such an interesting cool experience and so it was just nice to see Kamala dealing with the same thing here. But then I also really loved when we finally got into the uh, meat of this episode where we meet Kamala's Nani and she, I just love that her Nani know, knew right off the bat, was like yes you're a djinn, I'm aware of it and, and sort of playing off the fact that she had these crazy wild theories as Kamala's mother will point out later on uh, but that she just like believes in all of this and knows about the bangle and I liked that that sort of was that connection was made and that Kamala can confide in her and then we learned that the train that we saw last episode is the same train from the story that we heard earlier on of uh, Kamala's Nani getting drawn back to the train by these lights in the sky and that might tie into what we see at the end of this episode. I also like that when Kamala had her cousins take her out to explore around the city, we also get like a little hints of how Kamala's mother was rebellious within her own time when she lived in Pakistan, uh, kind of showcasing that her mother was also a little bit distant when she lived in Pakistan herself. And that's a connection that Kamala can actually have to her. That's like she always thought of her mother as the straight-laced person, but learning a little bit more about she was rebellious from people around her, I thought that that was just a nice way to have those two connect. Then we have Kamala going to investigate the train and she runs 
into this red dagger guy and they have a little bit of a fight and I, I the way that this shot was staged it reminded me of like a scene from Mortal Kombat it just straight up looked like they were on a line together they were fighting using powers like straight up like Injustice Mortal Kombat Street Fighter sort of deal so it just kind of made me laugh uh, but then I like that she gets taken to meet the red dagger I loved this set design like the cool temple look was amazing and then we learn a little bit more about the clandestines and how they're trying to basically override our world with their world and I, I like the way that it was visualized just the like CGI effect of this was generally kind of cool it, nothing particularly special that I liked the way that it was shown and it started getting me thinking about the world building that Marvel's been doing over the past few projects because we're starting to see more and more of these like different dimensions adjacent to ours uh, become more and more important within a lot of these stories I mean we've seen these kind of dimensions in Black Panther Moon Knight most recently Shang-Chi kind of made it a central uh, big thing towards its uh, third act as well so I'm curious to see how that might be sort of building to something larger in the MCU of like these all these alternate dimensions trying to override our own dimension like Marvel seems to have a lot of um pots on the stove I guess would be the metaphor I don't I, I, I don't I don't know I might be getting that wrong but anyways they have a lot of things going on and I'm curious to see uh, how they're all going to bring it together uh in some sort of infinity war kind of way over the next few years decades we're starting to see these little pieces laid out here that I thought was interesting then we get the clandestines breaking out because damage control is bad at the job. Kind of figured that that was going to happen. And then we get a nice scene between Nani and Kamala as well, where I really loved the fact that she drew this explicit connection between the border that was created between Pakistan and India during the partition and how that was sort of coming out of just British intervention and, and sort of forcing people apart. But then that clearly evoking what the clandestines, the Jinn, are trying to do with our world, trying to override ours with theirs and this sort of history of uh, colonialism that that is kind of evoking. And I, I like that subtle connection that it wasn't like beat you on the head with it, but that there was that connection being made there. I thought that that was a, a nice sort of tie into the thematics of this show. Then we get a nice little scene between Nani and Kamala's mother. Again, apologies, I forgot her name off the top of my head. I just know her as Kamala's mom. Uh, but I liked, again, just showing that these two women had a connection and that Kamala's mother was sort of on the outs in, in Pakistan herself and that she felt a uh, distance from her own mother and that's why she left to go to America. I will say though that this did read a little bit cliche. I mean, Kamala's mom literally said the line like, I needed a mother. I'm like, oh, okay, we're going down that route. But otherwise it was a nice scene if a little bit cliche. But then we have another small bonding moment between Kamala and her mother as well. I thought that was also very sweet and again, much needed for sometimes how they're kind of on the outs with each other. I like the, them declaring truce in the earlier part of the episode. Again, her mother could be this very stereotypical character but has continually shown a depth and a nuance to her depiction that I think makes her sort of overcome the, the hurdles of the sort of paint by numbers storyline that she's placed into. But then we get an action sequence with the red daggers being attacked by the clandestines. I thought that this was pretty standard. Like there was nothing super special about this uh, action sequence. It was all fairly well done. Honestly, this was one of the better action sequences that I think Marvel has done on a TV show budget. I think I, Moon Knight, for example, I think failed in a lot of those aspects. There was not a lot to come out of that show in terms of its action. And so I think seeing uh, kind of them stepping up their game here in a way that I think I have haven't felt since Hawkeye's like second or third episode where they had that car chase scene. I think that was nice to see them sort of reaffirm like this is good action in these TV shows. So good to see that. I also liked when we got to the end of the action sequence when Kamala turned to fight the clandestine and she wasn't scared. Felt like a good turning moment for Kamala where she wasn't running away but now actually ready to fight. I hope that this show isn't trying to say like that like one little quick action training thing that she got from the Red Daggers was enough to get her to this point. I think I hope she still has learning to do but I did like that moment to just show her turn in her character. Also, one other thing that I did like that the Red Dagger said was that Kamala has her own unique powers, that it was because of her and who she is that she has these sort of hard light abilities. So I thought that was nice that it was making it unique to her. And then we get the last part of the episode where she gets sent back in time to the partition. Clearly, she's probably going to influence the events that we've heard so much of. Uh, and I think this will be a really interesting choice. I'm curious to see how uh, Marvel will depict this because when I think of Marvel, I don't necessarily think think of them depicting one of the most uh, difficult and honestly um, 
really horrific events in human history. So uh, I hope they are able to handle it with care. Uh, that will not be something that I can necessarily speak about, but it'll be something that I'll be curious to listen to and see what they do next episode. But it is it is an interesting risk for them that uh, I'm glad that they are taking, but we'll sort of see if they if they do it well. But that's my thoughts on this episode of Miss Marvel. Again, I'm really, really loving this show. It's not something that's like over the moon like I'm excited about, but just continually this show is just really solid and I think doing a really good job of bringing nuanced depictions of this culture as well as uh, to these characters within this story. And I'm really appreciating that. But I'd love to hear what all of you think down in the comments below. Let me know what you think of this episode. I'd love to hear all of that. Again, sorry you're not seeing my face, but you'll see it soon. Don't forget I'll have reviews of Star Trek Strange New World and the Orville coming up very soon later on this week. But beyond all of that, I love you all and hope that you as always live long and prosper.